Welcome to Dare to Dream. This is Debbie Dashinger, and today's show features Dr. Sharon Martin, a physician and shamanic healer here to talk about bridging the mystical and scientific for healing. The Dare to Dream podcast won the COV award for best radio podcast show. Welp magazine named Dare to Dream with Debbie Dashinger, one of the top 20 best podcasts to listen to this year. It's a high ranking self-improvement podcast and Apple podcasts nominated for two People's Choice Podcast Awards and for a Webby Award. This show is sponsored by Dr. Dane here in Access Consciousness. And if you'd like to do energy work or become a facilitator, join them at Dr. Dane, D-A-I-N, here, H-E-E-R, dot com or accessconsciousness.com. This month is my 16th year of doing radio and podcast. I can't tell you how much I love you guys, how excited I get to read all your comments. And occasionally, some of you find my email and write to me. And I love some of the things you share because you point me in directions and people I never would have heard of and you actually further my journey. So thank you for being a part of my life and this conversation. I'm Debbie Dashinger. I'm a media visibility specialist. I help people who've got an idea for a book actually write it and get it published. I am a book writing coach. I also write, I run a company that takes author's books to a guaranteed international best-selling status, and I do all the heavy lifting for you. And the third leg of what I do is the ultimate visibility, which is to show you how to be interviewed on radio and podcast and get massive results. I'm about to do a free webinar so you can be your own publicist. Join me and go to debbiedashinger.com slash gift. And I can't wait to work with you on this webinar. It's D-E-B-B-I-D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R.com slash gift. My guest today, Sharon E. Martin, MD, PhD, graduated from John Hopkins School of Medicine. She's a board certified physician of internal medicine with a doctorate in physiology. Dr. Martin just released the book, Maximize Your Healing Power, Shamanic Healing Techniques to Overcome Your Health Challenges. As a physician and shamanic healer, Sharon offers a unique ability to guide you through challenges. She's a graduate of Healing the Light Body Curriculum of the Four Winds Society, and she also hosts two of her own radio shows called Maximum Medicine and Sacred Magic aired on the Transformation Talk Radio Network. A doctor at a rural health clinic, she lives in Pennsylvania. And to learn more, go to drsharonmartin.com. That's drsharonmartin.com. And I welcome Sharon to the Dare to Dream show. It is great to have you here. So nice to be invited. Thank you, Debbie. Yeah. I got I got the memo several months ago about you. And as you know, I reached out. I was, oh, this is a beautiful synchronicity. But you're a, a synchronicity, I'll just explain to the audience, because I am currently enrolled in Four Women's Society. You did it. I know that was quite some time ago. So your curriculum and mine, it's changed a lot. You did it in person. I'm doing it online. But, you know, an amazing journey. And also the fact, I mean, you've got a very impressive medical background. Can you talk a little bit about this, you know, winding path that got you here that blended allopathic medicine with shamanic energy techniques and discovering the potential of combining these two? So what I know now um, leads me to, to explain it this way. I've been guided by spirit all along. Did I know it 25 years ago? No. Um, I stumbled into medical school. I stumbled into graduate school before that. Um, and then found myself working as a uh, rural clinic doctor in my solo practice. Um, 
working as a solo practice and really struggling to make ends meet. Uh, the system of medicine is broken in so many ways. And I found myself frustrated by the lack of providing well-being or a sense of being healed to mm. my patients, despite doing everything by the book. Mm. And I said, there's got to be more. And one by one, I had little, I had experiences with my patients that led me to see, you know, why aren't we talking about their soul journey? Why aren't we talking about the way they are going to walk their path through the world? Why is that not included when we talk about let's heal your physical body? Well, what for? To move because you have a journey, you have a mission, you have a purpose. We don't talk about that in medicine. Perhaps you do in psychiatry, but not usually in medicine. And then I read Alberto Violdo's Shaman, Healer, and Sage, and something zinged. Hmm. And you know how there's times where you look at something and you just know that there's deeper meaning to the interaction? Um, and I signed up for the Four Winds classes. And that was uh, revolutionary for my personal life. Um, it opened me up it, and it reconnected to what I think all humans know is that original indigenous connection to be interdependent, to be part of nature, to just act in harmony and balance with the earth and earth's creatures. So this here was a teaching that valued that mm -hmm. and promoted that. Um, and then, so then the rest, I was hooked. I, yeah, that was it for me. It was the best. Um, and as you know, Debbie, Alberto teaches energy body techniques that he learned from the Peruvian um, medicine men and women and translated them into Western form. But the processes on the energy body were incredible. Um, they work. But I then started the next challenge was to have the courage to mm. open up in the clinic and actually talk about some of this stuff. Wow. And you can't really start off saying, oh, well, your energy body, I need to extract <laughs> something from it. You, know, you don't do that. But you can say, I sense that you're blocked and people know what you mean. They feel mm -hmm. it. Or I sense that your life force isn't flowing as it should. They feel that too. Or you have a burden to carry that isn't really yours, talking about soul contracts. And you have, you know, you have the energies of a recently passed loved one that are still hanging around you, um, that's time to let go of, all of those things people understand. Well, first of all, that's genius because bridging mainstream in a language that somebody can receive, even though energetically you're giving them the truth, but the language is a way that they can hear what you're talking about if they're, let's say, not part of this world, and that's the normal mm -hmm. conversation. That's so um, commendable because you're doing the good work, the noble work, and not letting this spiritual stuff, this healer stuff get in the way of that. And so, Sharon, once you make a comment like that and you see someone saying, yeah, I, I resonate, I understand, then how do you proceed to combine what you do? How do you use shamanic practices if you do? How do you use those processes in your practice? So in the practice, which is in the, in the mainstream medical model, it's hard to do full practice, but I have guided people to take their issue to the fire for clearing, to do a, a journey and teach them the basics when they're in their sacred space to meditate on having more flow through their energy body. So things that are, I can teach them a little and they can go home and do it. 
but to do a full blown shamanic session in the mainstream model these days, that isn't, you can't, well, you certainly can't um, write it up in the medical record. You'd probably be, you know, kicked out of town. And so with what you offer is, is most of your business this one-on-one -on -one, um, medical model with some of the energy healing that you're able to disseminate or, or are there other services you do? Are there groups? Are there one-on-one -on -one kind of practices that you have too? Well, I have um, a, my own healing practice that's kind of gone quiet. It's on pause now because of doing all the things for the book launch. <laughs> um, but that can be found on my website, uh, drsharonmartin.com, drsharonmartin.com. And those are all done remotely. Um, but as you know, with energy work, you don't have to be in the same time space continuum. Which is amazing. It is amazing. It's one of the things you and I were sharing before this began. You were asking me, what are some of my favorite things? And I think I am a very healthy skeptic. I'm a huge spiritual. That's my jam. That's my greatest value. And at the same time, I've, I've always been also very skeptical. And going into doing these practices, we learn them. I have the steps. Even if I've seen an example, still, I go into it. And the first thing I have to do is get out of the way because my head's like, mm -hmm. how's this going to work out? And mm -hmm. I have to say, not up to me. Spirit come in, lineage, you know, ancestors, you take over. I'm just a conduit. And then what unfolds after that, everything for me is like a case study. I am so blown away. And then I'm blown away when I do an exchange with somebody and say, my God, my life, I've just watched over the last five months, the arc of my being completely change and the people I interact with and gift these sessions to coming back and going, oh my God, like everything's different. Right. So I can imagine working with somebody like you who's seasoned at this. And also over time, I think everybody, you start with one thing, it's germane, and then other curiosities start presenting and revealing, and then we become interested in those and we add those to the mix. And is that where you are? You have this beautiful soup of things that you offer. I love that because once I, my eyes were opened by Alberto's teachings, I started working with other mystics and uh, energy workers and the, the knowledge just keeps building and it adds so much richness. But you know, you said one thing that I wanted to comment on. Um, when you are a healthy skeptic, one of the things I talk about, and I think I talk about this in the book, but for that moment, suspend disbelief. And I had to do that in class when we were um, doing our stones for divination with people. I was like, you know, I was telling the person something I was reading on the stone. I was like, where is this coming from? I must, I must be wacko. They must think I'm wacko. But it turned out completely differently. The person was blown away by the intuition, by the message from the stone and transformed by it. So suspend disbelief and then watch what happens. 100%, I take that to heart. Um, I concur. I can't wait to learn that. I haven't learned that yet. So divination with stones. And I think that's beautiful that you trusted and you still relayed the message uh, in that moment, not knowing. And um, well, yeah. when we, so we also did other things where we journeyed for our classmates and you just put that message out there as you get it, even when your rational human mind is going, this is crazy talk. I, I don't know where this came from. Um, it, you, you know, I've never had it. I've never had somebody go, you're nuts. I've had people say, how did you know that? Well, I don't know how I knew it. Spirit was talking. It wasn't me. 
do you are do you consider yourself to be clairvoyant psychic have any clair gifts my intuition has increased exponentially since beginning this work um i get knowings i've always had senses of things um but when i'm in the altered space when you do this work i get messages that i know on a, one side of my brain i say i hear it but i don't actually hear something i get a knowing mm -hmm. yeah i relate to that completely what when you talk about health challenges and the people who come to you can you elaborate what kind of people come to you what kind of challenges do they often have regarding their health in terms of my shamanic work or in regular all practice? of this I'm curious about all of it, the mystical and the scientific. Mm -hmm. In my clinical practice, my mainstream medicine practice, there are many times when I intuit that what's going on is more than meets the eye in the physical. And that's how Alberto's teachings of the four perspectives really help to train you as a, an observer, as a provider, to look what else is going on. Is there an emotional issue? I can pick up on those pretty quickly. Is there a soul deep issue? Something on the mythic journey. And you can reach people by seeing that and saying, you know, you have this issue, this health concern, I'll take low back pain, that's eluded a fix. But what I see when I see you is how burdened you are by all the responsibilities you take on and it feels like you're carrying a heavy load and then they start saying well yeah i mean i have to do all this and then i say okay well let's talk about this you say you have to who who made that rule who made that rule so there's a person living under a type of contract and i can see that perhaps this is a cage of their own making. And then if you start to talk to them about the underlying, that they've, they've created a box, they've limited themselves and how to change that, then people start to see it from a different perspective and they get their eyes opened. Does that mean that when working with people along this, path and in the way that you do that you're writing less and less prescriptions there's less pharmaceuticals going out and more inner healing happening for the outer healing when i do have patients in whom that comes up yes then the the prescription is um for them to do personal work for them to write down to journal what are the the things that they tell themselves every day that I have to, I should, I must, and to counteract that. Um, I had one person actually in a situation, a traumatic situation, actually see one of the other people present at that interaction that had actual evil and was having some glee at the trauma that was befalling someone else. And I could see it right away that my patient was impacted by this evil energy that was present at a time of trauma. And to be able to say, you know, I wouldn't scare somebody in saying, you've got some, you know, feeding tubes to this evil energy. But I did say, you need to get rid of that in your field. And here is a ceremony, a fire ceremony for you to clear, for you to intention. And I can teach intention and I can teach um, sacred space without them having to do much. They can do that on their own. Wow. That's so important. And that makes so much sense. You know, if somebody is in a lot of emotion, like a trauma that you described, there will become attachments. We become portals when that starts happening and, and untoward things can start to attach and feed off of us. And that's bad. Low vibration attracts low vibration. 
So the fact that you can give somebody the skills and empower them to become autonomous rather than having to do cord cutting and all sorts of stuff, uh, that's really beautiful. And so Sharon, talk about what it is you're doing now because you taught you mentioned earlier oh yeah along the line you know when i've been going ever since that a couple of decades ago i've been incorporated that alberta was beautiful the inception and now these new things have been com coming in and what are the new pieces that you're exploring so there's two primary currents that mm. i am uh tracking and riding on. And one, I'm uh, studying in a spiritual group where we're studying the uh, energetics of magic and mm. including alchemical and learning about magical realms and other and the forces of the universe that are in the magic kingdom. Those are fascinating. Those other energies that are exist but we don't see them and that are at play and for the most part have purposely stayed away from humans um so that's one and the other is consciousness and the universal field and how healing that not only can the practitioner and the client access the universal through their consciousness, but that you can tap into the original templates. My idea, I haven't figured it all out yet. Mm. Tap into the original templates and download those for healing. Oh, oh my God, this is total goosebumps. It's, so it's cool. I haven't figured it all out yet, though. So I'm, I'm just trying to learn as much as I can from people who understand the Akashic field. and mm. Yeah, so when you first started sharing about this last piece, what I thought you were saying was you were going to a zero point or a quantum space of no thing. But then you started talking That's, about, is that correct? Well, it is. that is the zero point field, yes. But the information field, which is another way to describe this, carries the templates, the memories, the information of all of our beings. And that's not, that's not my idea. That's uh, Professor Irvin Laszlo, his uh, writings. But I'm thinking about how to access that for restoring somebody to the original template, how you can as an energy healer download that and resonate the person to that. Are you reading? So you're reading, you're not participating in a Zoom or a live group. You're actually reading this material and then figuring out the matrix of how this works. Yes, mm. I'm reading and then pondering it. Man, okay. I want to follow what you're doing because this stuff sounds... Uh -huh really exciting and in your so, match yes so please there's a woman uh dr maria saggy s-a-g-i who wrote a book um remote healing in the non-local information field something i'm not sure i have the title right okay and she has worked now for over 20 years with going into altered state and entering the information field, which in my opinion is the same as the Akashic field. And then she uses a process called new homeopathy, where she has symbols that hold a vibration to fix the person's physicality. And I'm reading that book and I haven't learned it yet. Are you, are you actually, besides the understanding of magic, are you actually learning magical processes that you can use? Are you starting to play around with that? Um, in our spiritual group, um, we do have practices, but we're mostly interacting with the different magical kingdoms 
and understanding their energetics and why they've been hidden from humans for so long. It's very interesting you call it kingdoms because the it feels very archetypical what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. And it does feel very ancient and hidden. And, and I, what a beautiful time to be revisiting this, unearthing this. Mm-hmm. I think we are at a tipping point that our earth needs um, it needs galactic and universal help and it needs to restore connections to the magical world that has guarded and protected the earth for so long we have to get back into resonance with that yeah and is that is your book right now is that your contribution to this the energy of that changing mm. the tipping point Yes, that's my mission. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I feel that. In your book, like if, if you can give the power back to the individual, and once you can see when a person can read this and learn that they can take control of their health, they can also take control of their life. And when you see these processes and you see how they work, then perhaps your eyes open more to our interdependence. And then you start to be a steward of the earth. There's a bug flying around me. A steward um, and take that more seriously. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, that's very powerful. What about rituals? Because you talk about being a steward of the earth and it makes me think of New moon rituals, full moon rituals, all of that. Do you do rituals? Um, I do fire ceremonies. I'm, I live on a nice piece of property out in rural Pennsylvania. Um, ritual, I was telling this to somebody the other day. Ritual is that incredible sweet spot between you and spirit. And it's... It's when you are entering with intention and you're fully present, mind, body, spirit, and energy field, and you are intentionally aligning with those forces bigger than yourself. And then you're in a resonance that is so beautiful and sweet. And the actual act, the ritual you're doing, I think promotes that energy vortex. So that's how I see it. I like it. And do you do fire ceremonies often or on the regular? No, not not a dedicated uh, full moon or new moon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's a beautiful practice. I definitely want people, I've been doing it regularly, the fire ceremonies. I'm mad about them. We actually have a chimney in the backyard in the patio area. And I keep thinking how much I want to gather people here and just guide mm-hmm. them through this, you know, let them have that experience. I've actually done it. I had a coach bring me into her class. Uh, she does a mastermind and she invited me to come in and she said, what do you want to teach them? What do you want to do? And I said, you know, let's do a remote fire ceremony. And mm-hmm. it was so beautiful. You know, some of the people had some resistance and said, oh, I don't want to light a candle in my house. And that could be dangerous. There was a lot of stuff. And I I was perfectly fine with it, uh, knowing that that was just somebody's uh, stuff Stop. coming up. Yeah. And to a person, when we were complete, we did an hour and a half and it was so gorgeous and moving. I mean, there were people, <sighs> in fact, the greatest resistors had the most potent experiences and everybody was just blown away by it. And it just shows me over and over remote person. It's all the same. It does Mm -hmm. the same job. So I love that you do that. And I believe in the fire ceremonies very much that old ancient fire, right? (laughs) Right. My classmate, one of my classmates, Alison Normore, she lives in Newfoundland. She does new moon and full moon routinely. Um, in person and remote. So she streams it and you can join. And she's been doing it for quite some years now. What a great service. Mm -hmm. 
there is something primordial and powerful when you're with the fire. Absolutely. Um, I think the first time I ever felt that connection was maybe four years ago when I was in Costa Rica. And it was the second time I was there specifically to drink ayahuasca and do, you know, four back to back journeys. And they would talk about if you want to go outside, grandfather fire is there. Give those things to grandfather fire, let them go and let him burn it. And that was profound when I was on the medicine and I found myself sitting in front of this stunning fire and just like heaving stuff all of at the time. What I had been carrying around, you know, everything from lineage to my own crap. And just, um, it was a very palpable feeling of things being extracted and let go. Mm -hmm. And that's the first time I ever felt that connection or that knowing. Now I knew fire and what it could do. And so, yeah, with these new fire ceremony teachings, it's become exponential. What I loved, I remember when I was um, new in the training and we did classwork out in Utah. And so we had outdoor fire at a park. Um, and one of the teachers, very powerful shaman, Linda Fitch, was calling to the directions. And as we were rattling and sitting and being in the presence of the fire and you could feel the energy in the circle shift. You could feel it ramp up and then you could see the fire responding. And she would call or rattle strongly and the flames would leap higher. Or she'd say, you know, everybody quiet down. And the, I mean, it was wild. So Powerful and incredible. Yeah, the elements were paying attention to what was happening. They were participating. It sounds like yeah. they were very much a part of it. Wow. That's magic. That is magic. Mm. What do you want to use your magic for? What did, do you have any sense of where this might take you or what you desire to do with it? I think right now with my book and I have ideas for other books and is just reaching people and helping shift. So really helping people wake up and we need the tipping point for our survivability. Agreed. It's so interesting to me, folks like yourself who, I'm a book writing coach, but still the conception of, I guess I, I did my writing some time ago, but to keep writing is, it's a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad you have so much more to sing out loud. I commend you for that. Um, so your book, your current book, we'll call it, uh, Maximize Your Healing Power, you write about the four A's and you call it aware, allow, act, and affirm. Can you walk us through that process, Sharon, and explain how does it empower individuals to invite change, to invite healing? When I sat down to think about how do I see um, the healing steps occur for people. And I had the constructs taught by the four winds, the directions, the perspectives, the elements. And I thought, you know, we've got a basic um, underlying thread that's a journey as we go around the medicine wheel, as we go around the circle, we are doing steps. And I thought, you know, what are those steps? And at first, it was um, to be aware. Well, that, you know, that's even in AA, you have to be aware of your problem. Mm. Be aware. But how does that, how do you get aware? Well, you need more intuition. So how are there processes that you can open your eyes more and take in more data? Then you have to, and this is the biggest step I think I learned from shamanism, the fact that there are helpers out there. There are forces greater than myself. And um, to then have that be, allow that help in. So many times as humans, we're so fiercely independent 
and resistant to letting anybody help, especially um, bigger forces. And that's critical to me. If you want real power and real change, mm. you need to allow the big cheeses to help you. <laughs> and those are your power animals, the ascended masters, your spirit guide, your ancestors, forces of nature, thunder, rain, trees. Then you have to take an action. And that action can be um, figured out by processes um, in determining with your helpers and meditating on it. Take an action that is, um, do you need to clear something? Do you need to bring something new on board? Do you need to change a limiting belief? There are certain basic steps that people that may come up on any challenge. And then you can't just go away and say, okay, now universe, you do the rest. You have to actively keep those energetic changes alive. And that's what I call affirm, that you have to on a daily or at least twice a week or something, keep that energetic alive, both in your mind, in your intention, and in the energetic relationship you built, either with the changed energy field you have or with your helpers for them, for your power animal to be present. Um, you just don't, you can't just go away and have it be, you know, you could go to a powerful healer and they could make a change and boom, it could stay, but it's going to stay a whole lot better if you can keep it alive, mm. practice it. That's beautiful. When you talk about helpers, what is your, con not concept, what is your like intimate understanding of who the ancestors are literally? So we can take it literally and say they are those of my biologic lineage that have crossed over and that are present to help. But they're also ancestors of uh, former humans, of other tribes, of other um, cultures that have wisdom for us that we can talk to and align ourselves with. Um, the Native Americans in the Southwest, the Aborigines, mm. um, your Celtic, there are many beings that have crossed over that are still actively helping humans that are they're working their way through the planet um but for me the bigger helpers are um again of the unseen world and maybe those that were not ever really human mm -hmm. um i'm very attached and attracted to nature spirits and I, when I was on a spiritual trip years ago to Sedona with a group of women, um, we had a meditation on the red rock where the guy asked us to bring forth the dragons he had been working with. And these are creative powers of the earth, energetic powerhouses. Those currently are my, my primary helpers. God, I'm so glad I asked that question and thank you for that amazing answer. I just had this sense while you were explaining before the four A's and all the pieces of it. And I realized when you got to the piece about the helpers that I have had this very small idea and actually not a comfortable idea of ancestors. Mm -hmm. I think because I'm Jewish and mm -hmm. in my immediate lineage, my father and his whole family, what a mess. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the Holocaust, his father died in a cancer concentration camp. My father's story is a movie. It's unbelievable. He's alive, but he was a hidden child and it's a story. And, you know, then his cousins and et cetera. And, and I know they say that gets passed down genetically, DNA wise, some of that trauma. And 
so because of that, but also frankly, knowing the plight of the, the Jews, like it's insane. It's insane that they would find a country and settle down and be so beautifully received into the community. And literally at some point, the community would turn on them because I understand from the history, they started making money and doing well and contributing. And all of a sudden they became the evil that had to be expunged you know, their lives taken and everything. And they would run with what little they had to another country where they were accepted and they rooted again and it, over and over and all over the world. And mm -hmm. so when I will work with the lineage or the ancestors that comes up and I was realizing, as you said, that this feeling that I have around that of discomfort, like, do I really want to call you guys in? And, you know, maybe I'm the one cleaning a lot of stuff up right now and so, you know debbie i have two thoughts on that one is mm. yes there is a strong current of energy through the lineage of being a jew and it overpowers a lot of what else you could sense from that um i have two thoughts one is when you said you're cleaning it up i call that the pay it backward um you do this work, you open, clear some of that, and you're literally paying it backward. But it also reminds me to have you see that you're not limited to former humans as your helpers. There are powerful, even if you were to stay within the Judaic lineage, you could go back to the energies of the powerful prophets and women in the culture. That could be huge. That is huge. Oh my gosh. I never thought about that. Thank you so much. I'm even named after one of the great prophets and leaders, Deborah, in the Bible. Mm -hmm. uh, my Absolutely. My mother took a lot of choice in how she named myself and my brother. He's David, mm -hmm. right? And I'm Deborah. And so that is beautiful because there were some amazing people uh, as part of this Judaic lineage. Absolutely. And thank you. This is such a good conversation. I hope people listening are even considering their own past and path, everything from what happened with your immediate mom and dad, good, bad, indifferent, whatever, that you, you know, that you have discomfort in incorporating and then beyond in the history. And the other thing, Sharon, that you're saying that's like, for me right now is this piece about, I love how are you, when you're saying the unseen and when you're talking about all this, my mind is going into, well, of course, multidimensionality, paying it backwards is a lot of different ways, depending on which time and time is irrelevant anyway. And so this could be other uh, star families that are lineage that are coming into play in all of this. So my literally my understanding right now of this word ancestor is huge, like really contributory from a lot of different facets coming in. So when we call out, when I call out, there's a lot more going on than I have seen or perceived was happening. And you're right, you have galactic connections, you have intergalactic connections. I mean, we do have in our molecules, literally the elements of star making. Exactly. So oh that, is, that is cool, isn't it? That is so cool. Thank you very mm -hmm. much. That was a gift. That was a gift. I know that mindfulness plays a really crucial role in your methodology. Can you talk about the mindfulness matrix, how it works, how it enhances self-reflection, the recovery process, all of that? If you're going to do this work of shifting a health challenge or a life challenge, you need to see your future self as bigger and more powerful 
and you need to set your intention with wisdom and clarity. So the mindfulness matrix are the are not the only ones, but are nine key ways of psychological ways of being that if you can inhabit those and embody those, you are bringing those energies to your energy field and and feeding its fodder for your intention of how to shift what's coming down the pike. And so those are wisdom. Well, there are many ways you can have an intention that if you really picked it apart, might not be the smartest intention. You know, I intend to have a new job. Okay, boom, next week you get fired. You know, you be careful how you say, because you're going to get what you intend. You want clarity. You want expansion. You don't want to think small. That's the trouble I think we all have is we think small. We don't ever see ourselves as the powerful beings that we are. Do you also have, do you have um, the capacity for transformation? Do you really want to change? You've got to pick that apart because some people say they want to change, but they get a lot of goodies from staying exactly where they are. So those are ways to think about and embody a, a characteristic, a mental characteristic. And then that informs how you take on the future and how you intend to move yourself towards your healed or improved well-being. Are there practices that people who are listening can adopt to gain control over their own healing journey and experience a greater sense of vitality? So yes, in my book, I give many, um, both meditations and journeys and rituals to clear um, something like perhaps a contract you've been living under to um, have a bigger view of yourself, to meditate with and have a dialogue with your wisest self or a being that you ask to offer you advice. And to that, those are helpers. Um, so there are many processes in the book that take you through ways that you can begin the shift. How is your book doing? Maximize your healing power. How is it being received out there? It went on sale on May 23rd in the first week. It was number one on Amazon. And Inner Traditions, which is the publisher, said, um, so it's been about a month now, but two weeks into it, they had sold more books than they usually see from authors in six months. People are hungry for this. And the whole point of the book is for the reader to have tools that they themselves can shift for their own future. Mm. And I think also the beauty of what you've done by writing this book is, you know, each of us can only reach a certain amount of people and by doing these interviews, of course, you've just exponentialized that. And then I think the book is in another way, just to get the message out there, to reach so right. many people because picking up the book, yeah. And I hope a lot of people listening will pick up your book. Is it also an audible? It's going to be audio book by the middle of July. Oh, soon. Okay. Mm -hmm. Excellent. That's great. So lots of different ways. And I'm sure you have an ebook too. I know I, I got the regular book. Mm -hmm. And you've got more coming. <laughs> I've got all these ideas percolating around. That's interesting. So what is that process like for you? I mean, because you're in the process right now, you've given birth, right? You've been a doula, you've given birth to this beautiful expression. And it is doing very well. You said 
your publisher said more books than others have done in six months. Bravo. That's wonderful. Right message, right time. But in the, and here you are, you're doing the interviews, but in the background, things are calling to you and saying, me, I want you to create me. I'm not, um, I'm not as overwhelmed about the idea of writing another as I was the first time. Mm. The first time, it took a long time. Um, I had a, a wonderful development editor, Nancy Pesky, who did a fabulous job helping with the structure and the flow. And um, it was a process, but now I can see that I can do it. And my mission is to give people tools to make them bigger, more. That's why my my um, business, my shamanic and healing business is called Maximum Medicine. I want people to know how maximum they can be. Mm. That's wonderful. Tell me about your radio shows. So I was, this is spirit working, isn't it? Mm. Um, Back in 2017, I got an email from a young woman who was a senior producer at Transformation Talk Radio and asked if I wanted, she had come across my website, how, I have no idea because it wasn't very active, and asked me if I wanted to be a host. Um, And so I started hosting and doing interviews and then working with the founder, Pat Basili, and, and then taking on that was my own expansion and my own clarity and my own wisdom um, and taking on more um, ideas. And then out of that came the book. And now I'm interviewing um, people that just have beautiful things that they're bringing to the world. I love that. All right. And so there are different shows. One is sacred and magic. Sacred magic and one and maximum is, medicine, mm-hmm. right? So what if this one is about this? So the maximum <laughs> maximizing maximum medicine. This one is about health, and then the sacred magic that is more etheric. So magical. the maximum medicine is really more about human potential, mm. um, health, bringing it all back to health, but also our ways of thinking and the ideas of the quantum and Sacred magic I did with a, a friend of mine, and it was an basically an intuition energy healing show. Mm-hmm. Um, it's on pause now um, because of because of the book. But well, I feel weird calling you Doc Martin because those are a pair of shoes. Is all I was to say. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the the network calls me, so I, I'm Martin. used to that. Okay, we'll say Doc Sharon Martin. So this is Dare to Dream. What do you next dare to dream? What are your future dreams and goals outside of these books percolating and wanting to give birth through you? What else? I want to keep learning more about the really deep secrets of energy medicine, Mm. about communicating with the Akashic field and all of those really deep, the things probably that shamans did, but they didn't have words or language for it. Is there a ritual or a practice that you do every day that keeps you grounded, healthy, and centered? I have about a 30 to 35 minute drive to work every day. And it's, hold on, the puppy's chewing a cord. (laughs) (laughs) Bring the puppy on camera. (laughs) The puppy wants (laughs) airtime. Oh, he he really does. Um, And so I do a practice of calling in the dragons and the practice is for my energy field to ground, center, balance, and align. And I do that on the way to work every morning. Um, just 
aligning myself with those forces of the universe, asking that my field be centered and clear and activating the helpers, but with um, in a regulated fashion. Don't open the gate and let the everything stampede out. And is there anything here at the end that you want to say to the listeners and the watchers? I think you'll really like my book. I think it has things, the whole purpose is to give the reader tools. These are tools that you can take the power in your own hands. And so that's the point of it. And so I can feel comfortable saying that I think you'll like it because I really believe that it gives the reader tools and pow empowers them. So Maximize Your Healing Power is the title. Is it best for them to go to your website, drsharonmartin.com to get it? If you get it um, from Amazon or Barnes and Noble, and you bring the order number to my website, there's a page where you can enter the website and you can download a bunch of freebies. Oh, that's always fun. Very nice. Mm -hmm. And best that's the best place for folks to reach you as well, drsharonmartin.com. Perfect, yep. Thank you so much for spending this time with me and for your wisdom and insights. I appreciate it. Debbie, I had a great time hanging with you. Thank you. Me as well. And I end today's show with this quote from Swami Vivekananda. All power is within you. You mm. can do anything and everything. Believe in that. Do not believe that you are weak. Do not believe that you are half crazy lunatics as most of us do nowadays. You can do anything and everything without even the guidance of anyone. Stand up and express the divinity within you. Thank you for joining us today. Subscribe to this number one transformation conversation, Dare to Dream with Debbie Dashinger. Leave a comment. I do read them all and share this. Next week on the show, my guest is the amazing Susanna Kennedy joining us from Hawaii to share how to craft your 5D reality. Susanna is a visionary and has been guiding individuals and groups for decades in her powerful methods. Don't just dare to dream, dare to create all your dreams into your reality.